Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green ramp deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Invasion of Kaldheim as one of the key cards here. A 4-mana battle with 4 defense counters and when it enters the battlefield, exile all cards from your hand and then draw that many cards until the end of your next turn you may play cards exiled this way. So if some of you may remember the showdown of the skulls, this is sort of similar, but the setup is a bit different, since instead of exiling cards from the top of your deck, you exile the ones from hand. So the more cards in hand you have, the better, since you get to draw more cards, but at the same time you want to make sure that you can still cast and get value from the lands you exile, maybe one at the turn you play invasion, and then another on the following turn, so exiling two lands can still be totally fine. And then once we transform the invasion of Kaldheim, after hopefully getting a bit of value, we get Pyre of the World Tree, an enchantment that lets us discard a land card at any point to deal 2 damage to any target. And whenever we discard a land card specifically, exile the top card of your library and you may play that card this turn. So if we discard a land to deal 2 damage with the Pyre's ability, we get to exile the top card and maybe get some value, but it also applies to other ways of discarding land cards, like for instance if we cycle a Proving Ground or a Jetmere's Garden to draw a card, we also get to exile the top card of our library, so that can also generate additional value, and any other discard effects we might have in our deck can synergize with Pyre of the World Tree. And Pyre Pyre also stacks in multiples, so if we have two Pyres in play and discard a land card, then we get to exile the top two cards of our library that we get to play this turn, so that can also work out quite nicely. And then what else are we ramping into in this red-green ramp deck? Well, we've got two copies of Kogla and Hidaro, which can be cast for six mana as a 7-7, that when it enters the battlefield can either gain Trample and Haste until end of turn, or we can fight target creature we don't control can also pay 4 mana to discard Kogla from our hand to destroy an artifact or enchantment, and then shuffle Kogla back into our library from our graveyard, and we get to draw a card. And that ability will be uncounterable, much like the Channel Lands abilities, so that can be a very nice and naturalized effect. And then we also have 4 copies of Itali Primal Conqueror, the 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary trampling dino, that when it enters the battlefield we get to exile the top card of each player's library until we hit a non-land card, and then play those cards for free. So Itali provides immediate value when it enters the battlefield, and we can also transform it for 9 and a green Phyrexian mana to make it into an 11-11 with Trample and Indestructible, and it deals common damage to a player in the form of poison counters, so that can take out the opponent in a single attack potentially. So this is the perfect curve topper for the deck, and to make sure we get to 7 mana we can of course rely on a few ramp cards, starting at 2 mana with Azusa's Many Journeys, letting us play an additional land, eventually transforming into a 3-3 creature, and then we also have two copies of Invasion of Ergamon, which starts out with five defense counters, and when it enters we can make a treasure token, and then we also have the option of discarding a card to draw a card, and then once transformed we get the Cliff Charger, a 3-4 Trampler that when it enters lets us discard a card, and if we do search our library for a land or battle card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So we can also potentially synergize with a transformed Pyre of the World tree, discard a land, and get some value, but it's also a way to potentially find our Invasion of Kaldheim if we didn't get one already. And then the treasure token from Invasion of Ergomon and playing an extra land with Azusa's Many Journeys are two ways of potentially casting a turn 3 Invasion of Zendikar, which will immediately search up two basic lands to put on the battlefield tapped, and then it's another battle siege with only three defense counters, and once transformed we get the Awakened Skyclave, a 4-4 with Vigilance and Haste, still counts as a land, and then it can also tap for one man of any color, so it can also help us ramp into a tally and transform it into the Primal Sickness. And then a curving a topiary stomper into an invasion of Zendikar is also great. Stomper also finding a land when it enters the battlefield, it's a 4-4 with vigilance, but it can only attack and block as soon as we have 7 or more lands in play. So a stomper into an invasion of Zendikar will get us 7 lands in play, and that way we can immediately pressure our invasion of Zendikar to transform it into the awakened Skyclave and have two 4-4s with vigilance in play. And then uh, to round things out, we've got some cheap interaction, starting at 1 mana with Play with Fire, dealing 2 damage to any target. Can also help transform our battles, but gives us cheap interaction against aggro decks. 
And then at 2 mana, the full playset of a Volcanic Spite, dealing a 3 damage to a creature, Planeswalker or Battle. So it doesn't go face, but goes everywhere else. And we can also put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library if we'd like, and if we do draw a card. So that can also be helpful in smoothing out our draws. If we, for example, drew too many ramp cards and are missing a top-end card, we can dig for one, and the reverse is also true. And then we've got two copies of Into the Fire, which has two different modes, can either deal two damage to each creature, Planeswalker and Battle, can be great against the aggressive decks with lots of small creatures, or we can put any number of cards from our hand on the bottom of our library and then draw that many cards plus one, so similar to a Valakut Awakening, so that can also help smooth out our draws and dig towards action in the late game. And then Nahiri's Warcrafting is also great, dealing 5 damage to a creature, Planeswalker or Battle, so it can also immediately transform some of our battles. And then we get to look at the top X cards of our library, where X is the excess damage dealt this way. So if we deal 5 damage to a 2 toughness creature, we get to look at the top 3 cards of our library, and then exile one of those cards that we get to play until the end of our turn. So sometimes it's better to hang on to the Warcrafting until we can deal excess damage to a creature, and potentially still play a land from exile afterwards, which is a common play pattern and of course 5 damage perfect for taking out a 5 toughness shielded and that pretty much covers the entire deck as we mentioned we've got a few tri lands here which we can cycle to synergize with our invasion of Kaldheim once transformed but also good in the late game if we're flooding out a bit since we are playing 26 lands to make sure our Azusa's many journeys is functional and so we don't miss any land drops which is kind of the death knell for a ramp deck and then we also have some red-green dual lands. I omitted Copper Line Gorge, since we don't want our lands coming into play tapped in the late game for the most part. I make an exception for the cycling lands. And then plenty of basics to search up with Invasion of Zendikar and Stomper. And then the channel lands offer a tiny bit more interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, missing maybe a 2 or 3 mana accelerant. But I'm still gonna keep it. Can use our Warcrafting to transform Invasion if needed. Invasion of Kaldheim is going to be better once we deploy Invasion of Zendikar. And a turn to Adversary. Might have to be taken out here. Azusa is a little awkward. So, yeah. Could Warcrafting now. I could wait until next turn to find my land drop. And then still play Azusa's many journeys to eventually get a 3-3. But if we find a land naturally, I'll just play Invasion of Zendikar anyways. It's gonna be a Harvester next, and a Volcanic Spite. Okay, so let's take out Harvester and hopefully find a land in the top 3. And then next turn we can Invasion of Zendikar. Volcanic Spite, also an instant speed way of transforming it into the Awakened Skyclave. And a Trespasser, fair enough. Itali, something nice to ramp towards. So we've got the mana to potentially cast Itali if we draw a land next turn. And there's a Fable. Can our opponent take out our 3-3? They can. So we are taking a decent hit. And no land, sadly. So what's next? I can... Volcanic Spite, the Invasion, play another one and transform it. That sounds pretty appealing. And get rid of Azusa's many journeys here. And then second main phase I could still cast the Warcrafting if I'd like. Alright, opponent's gonna trump. That's fine as well. Put on discarding another Fable. And I go for the throat. Takes out our Skyclave. Alright, so we're taking another 6 here. So Itali better stabilizes. 
could also go for the Warcrafting on Invasion first, and then still play Tally afterwards. That seems safest. Did not find a land. Did find Invasion of Argamon. I could grab it here, although I don't think I can play it. If I play Invasion, I could attack it down with a Skyclave, transform it. Or I can just uh, attack for 4, play Tally, or play Tally now to play around removal on Skyclave. I don't think the 4 damage really matters, making sure we get an Tally in place is probably more important. And then a Chandra and another Tally are both pretty nice hits. And our opponent concedes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a bit light on ramp, but we have a Volcanic Spy to maybe get rid of Itali and dig for a ramp spell. So I'll try it. Good early interaction against some more aggressive decks. Going on the green-white plus one counters with the Bond Warden. Okay, so we won't lack targets for removal here. I'll take the one, wait and see if we need to play with fire something else. And a brawler seems like a fine target. Now we could also hang on to Into the Fire to maybe wipe the board, but at the same time I want to hit my land drops, so spite shuffling away in Itali could be better. Beast Caller is worth taking out. Alright, land is good. And another Spite. Could also into the fire to draw a few more cards and make sure we hit our land drops. Right now, Invasion of Kaldheim is looking a little awkward, since I don't want to necessarily exile Itali before I get a chance to cast it. But I think I should still pass... And then maybe Spite could get rid of Invasion. And then next turn Warcrafting can also help hit my land drop. Another Beast Caller. Okay, now into the fire killing both creatures could be fine. Even though I don't necessarily hit my land drop with it. Sure. Found a land. Could also play Invasion first, but then the Beast Caller would grow out of Into the Fire range, most likely. So let's just play it safe. And then we can use Nahiri's Warcrafting to also transform Invasion of Kaldheim at some point. So we're controlling the game nicely, and our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has a powerful late game, although we are going to be a bit vulnerable early on without any cheap interaction. Warcrafting maybe turn 4 after getting an extra mountain. So I'll try it, but if we're up against an aggressive deck, this could not work out. So far, black, green, and a turn 2 Scrap Gorger. Okay, so... We can work crafting on three if necessary, but probably better to play Stomper first so we can maybe hit a land drop with a war crafting. All right, Shakedown heavy. That one's quite scary if our opponent can combine it with a fight rigging, so that might be worth taking out right now. And then a tally, I'll decline. That way it's still in our deck as a potential top deck. Kogla is potentially an answer to the enchantment, and yeah, there it is. They would have been able to enable Hideaway on turn 4. So now we can use a 4-man ability to destroy the enchantment. Scramgorger now survives Volcanic Spite as well. And another Itali. 
Yeah, I'll just go for it now. Could wait for them to maybe play a creature that would combine with fight rigging. That might uh, change their decision. Another fight rigging? Okay, well now uh, I'm not sure which one to take out. I guess if they instantly decide here on this fight rigging it means it's probably better than the previous one. But it took them a second. So I think the first one is more likely to have something exciting underneath. Now the good thing about our opponent playing fight rigging is that they might have some juicy spells for us to get for free with a tally. But Scrap Gorge are already up to 5 powers, so could enable fight rigging soon. Although next turn we're looking at Italy at least. Fight rigging up to 6. Opponents missed a few land drops as well in the meantime. So their hands might be all expensive spells. Alright, let's go Itali. Cast it main phase in case we hit a haste creature of the opponent's deck. Or a battle we can transform. And an Archfiend's a good one. And into the fire can refresh my hands. I'll keep Itali, the rest can go. Even though I could keep Invasion to get the other invasions potentially, but... Let's just go for more exciting plays and find an invasion of call time anyway. So attack for four. Also wouldn't mind redrawing Kogla to destroy the fight rigging. Opponent had to go for the throat for Itali. But we've got another one. So yeah, we'll find out what's underneath the fight rigging here in a second. A Tyranax Rex. That's a good one. We'll have to double block if our opponent attacks, hoping there's no instant speed removal. And go to one. Alright, opponent had to go for the throat, so we're just dead to the trample damage now. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Especially if we pick up some of our 4 mana ramp cards. For now, turn 2 Azus has many journeys, play an extra land up against red aggro. The life gain's also gonna come in handy. And we can keep up a play with fire. Foundry potentially pointing towards their opponents having lots of spells in hand and not a whole lot of other lands. And uh, probably fine to take out Phoenix Chick. Stems bleeding. Don't have any flying or reach creatures to block the Phoenix Chick later. And now another interesting choice. Do we invasion discarding land hoping to find a more exciting ram spell? Or do I just keep things as is? And then next turn I would go up to 6 mana total with the extra land we play, so not quite enough to play a tally. So yeah, maybe going for a discard here is worth it. I found a Volcanic Spike, that's fine. Had we kept play with fire alongside Volcanic Spike, we could have maybe transformed the invasion. Now a Chandra, that one I wouldn't be able to take out with just a Volcanic Spike as it's gonna plus one and increase its loyalty before I get a chance to take it out. So Chandra is gonna stick around for a while. And a Swiss Spear I might want to take out instead. Although I guess we will get the uh, transformed Azusa next turn as well. Maybe hang on to Volcanic Spite in case I draw another expensive card I want to get rid of to draw lands towards Itali. Don't have anything else planned with my mana anyways. Alright, found a land. That's fine. So I'll play a land and pass. 
And then we've got a lot riding on this Itali. Probably fine to take out Swiss Spear now. Opponent's unable to cast two instants with only a single red mana to prowess it out of three damage range. And I'll hang on to Itali, thank you very much. So with the exception of three of our trial lands, all our lands come into play untapped now. So we're quite likely to play an Itali next turn. If not, hopefully find a spell that's relevant. Opponent's got two cards left in hand. And passes it back. Okay, let's hope the dinosaur delivers. And Kumano and an invasion of Zendikar is not bad. Kumano also deals damage to Planeswalkers. And then by getting two more lands, it's going to be easier to transform Itali to potentially end the game in one attack. For now, I like taking out the invasion of Zendikar to make an extra 4-4. Four four. As we cannot take out Chandra. Opponent has the option of jumping with the Foundry, but it looks like they activated it too late. And our opponent explodes. All right, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, it's pretty rare to see a one-lander in a 26-land deck in best of one, but we'll take a mulligan. This is better. And... I might get rid of Azusas, because we don't have a ton of lands in hand, at least Invasion could make me a treasure to cast a turn 3 Invasion of Zendikar. Volcanic Spite might be the better turn 2 play, but we'll see. Opponent Mono White with a turn 2 Thalia, so that's gonna prevent me from casting anything here. Okay, pass it back. Picked up a Warcrafting, so more interaction and an Adlin, so that's going to hit quite hard. Can't play the Warcrafting to take out Adlin just yet. So I'm going to have to just uh, pass and take out Thali here. Although I can then discard Invasion of Ergamon, which I probably don't need anymore. Can let our opponent attack first. Already down to 12, so if they can keep up the pressure here, we're going to be dead very soon. Hopeful initiate's fine. And our opponent passes. So probably go for Warcrafting on Adlin, and then hope to hit a land in the top card, basically. That way we get a bit of value. Okay, we did. They might have another Adlin in hand given that they didn't play much last turn. No, just a Guardian of New Benalia, attack for three. And I'll land the draw. Both Stomper and Invasion of Zendikar will get me to the mana for Itali next turn. Stomper leaves me with a bigger creature that can attack and block, so that's probably the preferred play. Invasion would just make it a little bit easier to then transform Itali, if that's part of our game plan. But yeah, for now we're taking another 5 at least, so it's possible Itali's not going to be good enough. Late on arms at least, gains 3. And an adversary can pump the team, so that's incredibly scary. Had they just played adversary without late on arms, would we have died? Yeah, we would have just been dead here. So glad they... Uh, Exile the Stomper, I suppose. Although Itali's gonna need to get pretty lucky to save us here. We do have a 2 damage sweeper we could hit. That would solve a lot of our problems. And we actually hit it into the fire, dealing 2 to each creature. And then late on arms can finish off the hopeful initiate. So that should clean up the board nicely. 
They can save Guardian of New Benalia by discarding a card. So even if they had another Laid on Arms in hand, which also they don't have enough planes in play to exile a tally, they wouldn't be able to exile a tally while keeping Guardian in play. So same applies to another removal spell. Okay, so the board is clean. We've got an Itali in play. Let's see if we can survive. Adlan's scary. Double invasion could hang on to Crucible, which I can channel for three mana to make some blockers. And then just play invasion, attack the invasion to get an extra creature. That seems like a pretty reasonable play here. And then next turn I can transform Itali to potentially threaten a one-hit KO. So we get our 4-4. Four, four. And so even another Laden Arms shouldn't kill me. It's gonna be a Thalia, that's fine. And a Steel Seraph, wow. Okay, I guess uh, this one does not have reach. So their opponent figured out a way to kill us here. Fly Adlin, and that's gonna do it here. Fair enough. We were ready to transform a tally for the win. Yeah, this game was a lot of back and forth. GG's. Can show them the Crucible. But that's not gonna cut it here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. Could use a 2-drop here to potentially help out against aggro. But at least on the play we can uh, Warcrafting on 3 to try and stabilize a little bit. And Warcrafting could also be useful in transforming invasion. Opponents a multicolor deck. Also a good idea to play our non-basic lands first on the off chance that our opponent's playing Thalia and the Gitrog monster, letting our non-basics enter the battlefield tapped. It looks like a 4-5 color domain deck, so that's going to be a tough matchup. Opponents doing a similar thing, ramping into 7 drops, but they have access to Atraxa, which is usually going to overpower us. So our best chances are opponents stumbling and having a clunky draw. But if we both get to an actor game plan, that's going to favor the opponent. So for now, Invasion of Zendikar, develop our mana. And then hopefully we get to see Invasion of Kaldheim in action. Opponent's got her own Invasion of Zendikar. It's only fair. So here I'm kind of liking Warcrafting the Invasion of Zendikar, hopefully hit a land, and then play another Invasion of Zendikar, which I can also immediately transform. Okay, that's pretty nice. So now we'll have two Skyclaves giving us extra mana. And I can still even Volcanic Spite at instant speed, but don't expect you need it. We have enough damage to take out an Atraxa if it shows up. And now is a perfect time to play our Invasion of Kaldheim and transform it. It's gonna be an Archangel of Wrath. Okay, that can take out one Skyclave. Or the Invasion. Their opponent gets their 4 4. And probably fine with the trade. Opponent's got a Leyline Binding, but that only exiles non land cards, and Skyclave is indeed a land, so that did not quite pan out for them. Okay, Invasion of Kaldheim, step one. Ok, 
Okay, and then let's take a look at our mana situation. I think Warcrafting on the Archangel's fine, and then we'll see what we can find with it. A land, that's perfect. So play the forest that goes away end of turn. And then transform our invasion. And play Invasion of Zendikar as well, while we're here. And now we've got our Pyre of the World Tree, turning a lands into damage sources out of basics in our deck. Good to know. Sadly, we won't be able to cycle Jetmir's Garden with uh, it in exile, otherwise it could also synergize with our Pyre. There's a Traxa, no surprise. Don't actually have the best answer to it. And our opponent's going to get to refuel here. So the Wasted Leyline Binding may not make a huge difference in the end. I guess we can use Spite alongside our two lanes to take out Atraxa. That might be the cleanest solution. But our opponent already found a backup Atraxa. Sunfall to clear the board to ferry. Yeah, this is going to be rough. Killing an Atraxa... It's probably a necessity, but it's going to feel pretty bad when our opponent just gets to play another one. But so it goes. Volcanic Spites get rid of Azusa's many journeys. Could also transform our invasion here. I don't think that plays into this board all that well. Okay, picked up an Itali. That could be exciting. Hitting Ossification and Invasion of Ergamon. So Ossification can get rid of Atraxa. And Invasion... Could discard a Play with Fire here. And then play our Jetmir's Garden before it goes away. And... Uh, don't want to necessarily transform my Invasion of Zendikar when our opponent's got a Sunfall in hand, so this one might be better off going face or weakening the Invasion of Ergamon. And I don't feel like playing a Topiary Stomper either here. Opponent's still at 27, so it's going to take a while for us to actually kill them. Okay, let's pass it back. Still have our Pyre available at instant speed. Although better to do it in our turn when we can actually play the cards we exile. If our opponent goes for Atraxa, then we get a chance to transform a tally. So yeah, our opponent's gonna sunfall here. At least that's gone. And they still have the mana for an invasion. It's gonna be a stomper instead. Okay. Take our turn. This one I'm going to want to cycle. Stompers out of lands to search up. So we have a lot of action left in the deck at least. So decision time. Kogla could just fight the Stomper. We could take it out by discarding two lands. Although then we're going to maybe struggle to take out Atraxa. Who knows? But yeah, let me start there. See where we end up. Into the fire. It's pretty nice here, dealing two to my battles as well. And then Invasion of Ergamon could get another Invasion of Kaldheim potentially, as opposed to keeping the Stomper. Kind of like that idea. And then if I play Invasion of Kaldheim, I could try to transform it right away here by attacking it with Kogla. Unless our opponent's got another Leyline Binding, which is of course a possibility. Uh, does mean I wouldn't get a chance to discard the lands I currently have in hand. But sure, let's go for it. Okay, pick up a few more lands. And then now Hasty Kogla. Go after Invasion of Kaldheim. And 
and play a tap land. So now if I discard a land, I get to exile two cards with Pyre. Although we have to be careful we don't run out of cards at this rate. And then finding another Itali is probably our best chance, hopefully finding another answer for the opponent's Atraxa. Also have to be mindful of another Leyline Binding, exiling the Ossification, giving the opponent an Atraxa back. Archangel of Wrath, number two. Takes out our Cliff Charger. That's okay. Yeah, this five color domain deck's got a lot of ways to gain life. So it's not gonna be easy. The fairy shows up. Could try and deal four damage to it now. I think I'm still better off waiting until my turn so I get value for my pyre. Is your opponent stepped out now? Okay, so we can also just kill the Archangel and then finish off the fairy with Kogla. So let's say we start there. Find Stomper, find Azusa's Many Journeys. Could also uh, cycle the Proving Ground, see what else we exile. And then I have the option of Volcanic Spy to finish off Archangel. Exile two more cards, find more Stompers. Okay, so play land for turn. And Volcanic Spite, probably getting rid of an invasion at this rate. Find another Stomper. So finish off the Fairy and play a couple Stompers out. Any cards left in library, still three Italis, so those are the heavy hitters. Question is whether I run out a final stomper here. I guess I get to play an extra Buseju thanks to Azusa's many journeys, that's nice. Playing another stomper could run into another sweeper, they might have a second sunfall in the deck. Although I might just have to put the pedal to the metal here, hope they don't have another sweeper. And if they do, at least I force them to Sunfall, which exiles, which is one of the few answers to an indestructible Itali. Although that being said, I guess their opponent also is running Binding and Ossification, so they have plenty of exile effects for Itali anyway. Alright, opponent had another Sunfall, that's unfortunate. So the board is nice and clear for a second Atraxa to take over. But our top decks are good at least, especially with double Pyre in play. Any land we draw turns into two damage and two cards. Opponent can transform one of their incubator tokens at instant speed. And our opponent's gonna attack the invasion for two. Okay. So activate our pyre, take out probably the token as opposed to go for an invasion, which is also an option here. Yeah, I guess we don't care about the token all that much. Okay, and there's a tally. Which we should be able to transform right away here. Farewell, and a Nahiri's Warcrafting. What does Farewell do for me? So we have a lot of enchantments ourselves, definitely don't want to name enchantments. Uh, artifacts would get rid of the treasure, which I can sacrifice first, and the opponent's tokens as well. So that seems good. Uh, and that's probably it, maybe graveyards as well. Might actually want a Warcrafting first, which means clicking on Farewell first. So we get a bit of value, and this will name Artifacts and Graveyards. And then Warcrafting the token, so we potentially exile something else. Another Itali. Okay, that's an option too, I suppose. Instead of transforming the current one right away. 
and then sank the treasure. Let this happen. So we can cast another Itali, hope to hit an opponent's Atraxa, perhaps. Stomper and Invasion instead. Okay. Out of lanes. And uh, could just go face, could go for the invasion. Sure, let's uh, transform here. So we've got a lot riding on Itali surviving. And our opponent being unable to answer the 11-11 trample indestructible. And there's a Traxa. Can they find another Leyline Binding or Ossification? Seems likely. And yep, yeah, there's Leyline Binding. Herd Migration to make an army of beasts. Another Archangel. So yeah, this seems like uh, we're not going to be able to find enough Italis to win the game. Which was a reason not to exile the one last turn, honestly. But kind of called it at the start of the game. Atraxa is just going to be too much value for us to overcome. Despite getting double Pyre going, which has been quite impressive. Binding actually going for Pyre, so they must have another answer for Itali here. Archangel number three. Transforms the invasion. So they can still potentially keep up uh, Leyline Binding if they have it in hand. Alright, yeah, let's untap. And I play with fire at the draw. Okay, so I could transform Itali and attack with it, forcing some chumps. Could try and take out the opponent's creatures first, although maybe the trample will catch them off guard. And I have plenty of mana to spend anyway, so I don't think it matters whether or not they exile my Itali here. And then all-out attack seems reasonable. We've got to burn spells to back it up. Put on triple blocks. Okay, so we get to take out Atraxa and the Archangel. And our opponent gets to fight another day to try and exile Itali. They maybe didn't notice the indestructible on Itali, that's possible. Bangbuster draws. Opponent cycles, well they're definitely digging for another exile effect, but I'm sure they'll find one soon enough. So they're not casting herd migration, that's not good enough anymore. And they found another binding, fair enough. Or Boseju also not an option anymore. And a stomper. We'll see if our opponent has any basics left. Twenty one cards versus thirteen. But our opponent's also out. Yeah, it's gonna be a struggle to fight through herd migration, potentially more Atraxas. And I may as well trade here. Could also just take it out with my burn spells, although we can still take out Stomper, so I don't think it makes a huge difference. Okay, into the fire. Could potentially give me some redraws. Could also help me take out some beasts alongside my other burn spells. Opponent's at 31, so even if I get in for 11 here... Opponent will get to make an army of beasts, that's probably not going to be good enough. Or I can just dig for my last Itali. Should have one left. Kogla destroying the binding could also work. So how many cards do we have left? 11, so Invasion of Kaldheim can keep digging. Found our Itali. Okay. 
So yeah, cast another Italian, hope for the best. Herd migration is not going to be all that amazing, although I guess we have a few tri lands, so it's not the worst. And another Azus has many journeys. So yeah, we're just missing an island here actually, so we get to make four beasts. And then I guess we'll uh, Warcrafting here, although with seven cards remaining, maybe it's not worth it. And I'll just go face, don't think we need to transform another invasion. Can finish off Stomper with a play with fire if necessary. But I think it's gonna boil down to whether or not our opponent finds another answer for Itali here. Okay, pass it back, cross our fingers. At the very least they can make five beasts. Bankbuster draws. Tower cycled. And our opponent explodes. Wow, so Itali finally seals the deal in an epic battle where we finally got to see our invasion of Kaldheim in action. Sweet. Alright, so yeah, we got to see our red-green ramp deck in action. Now, overall, what do I think of the deck? It probably ends up being weaker than the five-color domain deck. It has a few advantages over it in the sense that we have access to cheaper removal spells. The mana base is maybe a bit more consistent, so that could help in the best of one aggro meta game. But especially once you move to best of three, you're probably better off with the additional power level that a card like Atraxa brings to the table. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.